not all of them use a capacitor, but if the capacitor is bad, it would still hum. That's uh, right. That what you said. If the capacitor is not good, then that it would start. Bad though. It would still start because its capacitor is not series with the run winding. It's in series with the start winding. So the run, it would the capacitor has nothing to do with the running winding. The start winding is just to start the motor. It's not to keep it running. Yes, son. Yeah. Sometimes, like, like you say, uh, if the drain pump is bad, though. It's full of water, not gonna. Well, it would jam it up, but again, you guys are all bringing up all these things. I'm trying to talk about the timer and the circuitry. <laughs> and <everything else. laughs> gotcha. You know, if the belt's broken, the motor will hum. Yeah. It's actually running exactly. and spinning, but the belt broken, it's not turning transmission. So you hear a hum mm -hmm. and it's running. So, yeah, I mean, we could, we could come up with all kinds of things, but I want to stick to like, you know, you see all these switches closed and you see the chart. The point is like, you know, if we go back to this chart here, the point is you've got all these different switches going on and it looks confusing and look a mess and you're like, well, I'm going to check this switch and I'm going to check. You don't check every switch in the timer when you're fixing the machine. Okay. You have to say what switches are closed so you know how is power flowing through the diagram. Okay. Then you have to look at the circuit for the part you are looking to see whether that part's working or not. If it filled up and the motor was humming, then I'm just going to look at this circuit for my motor humming. Okay? Gotcha. What if it filled up and it didn't even hum at all? And that was the first switch you said, which was what? Six. Because if six was bad, the run or the start wouldn't have power and the motor wouldn't work. So, in other words, you can say, well, if this one's bad in the machine, well, these windings wouldn't get power. If that's bad, so I'm not going to check two or four because if two or four is bad, the motor would hum. So I'm going to check six. That's the only switch in the timer I need to check if it failed and didn't do anything else. So I, I start off with six different switches in the timer, but looking at the circuit and knowing that this switch controls this component, I don't have to check all those switches in the timer. I just have to check that one switch. But knowing which cam it is, and whether it's the top or the bottom, is to where you put your pins of your meter leads to test. Okay? So let's take a look at, at a different thing here. This is like spaghetti. It goes backwards and forwards and everything else. And then we Six bottom, four top, and six, and, and here. Okay. How does power get into the water valve? You go in, go through the switch here. Now, am I actually going through that switch contact right now in the lid switch? For that circuit? Yeah. Look closely. No. Does it go through the lid switch right to feed this board? Um yeah. No, it don't. Yeah. It goes through the wiring, but it doesn't actually go through the switch. Yeah, Just the wire goes through it. If you look closely, yeah. there's no <coughs> switch there. Yeah. Okay. We can uh do this and, and zoom in again. You know what? Let me let me get smaller yeah. and, and do something else. Let's let's make this a little bit easier here. Wait a minute. Click on that. Let me do this right here. Give me a second, guys. Where's my camera tool? Camera tool. Hey, it's supposed to take a picture of where it posted and I don't oh, know. Put this one back here. Let's go to the next page. Where is my picture? It's supposed to take a picture. Let's try that camera tool again. Capture for a new page. Here we go. Okay, 
But if we look at this switch closer, I'll have to make the, uh, the diagram larger. If we look closely at this switch here, it's a little hard to see, but there's two little fuses right inside that lid switch on the main tag. When power comes in here, it runs through the, sw the switch. It goes through the fuse here, but it's not actually through the switch contact. You see that? The switch is open. They allow that so you can leave the lid open and throw clothes in and fill it up with water. But the other reason why they have that is, I ain't gonna tell you. Does anybody know the other reason? Uh, is it used to provide power to the other side of the um, wiring? Nope. Okay. That's all I got. Talk question. It's used for the customer to have their own ability to soak the clothes. Now, so, sometimes people like to soak the clothes for an hour in bleach or in soap or something like that before they wash it. You have a pre-soak feature on the timer, but it's not very long. If they lift up the lid, this will allow water to go, power to go into this water uh, control board here, and it will send power to the water valves and fill up the water. But as soon as the water level switch goes to the full position, it's gonna turn on what? The motor <coughs> and the timer, which was down here but it has to go through the lid switch to get down to those two components. <clears throat> so if the lid switch is open, the timer won't advance and the motor won't advance as long as the lid's open. So the customer can put it to a low, medium, high water level, throw clothes in there, put a little bleach in there, put a little soap in there, and they can let it fill up. Once it fills up, it's gonna sit there till they close the lid. And that is so a customer can have a soak cycle for as long as they want. You know, they got someone that works in the appliance industry and gets all dirty and nasty and they want those clothes to soak a little bit. You know, they can do that. And that's what that's for. Okay? So let's go back to um, the diagram here. Mary meeting of Turkey. If I can resize it back to normal. Let's just do this over. So power comes in, goes like this, goes through here, and, and tells the board power's up. We do have a connection here, which then has to go through three, and it has to go into the timer here somewhere. Where is the uh, Where's the power going into our, oh, I'm sorry. It goes this way. And here, so these here are telling the board we're going to fill water. Why do we have a circuit board there? Because here we have a temperature selector switch, whether it's hot or cold, the temperature to water. So the board is not telling it to be a hot wash, cold wash or whatever. Why add a circuit board? Um, is it so that way they can convert the 120 volts to 12 volts or something like Why that? Why go through all that? The, if you look at these water valves here, the hot and the cold water valve, if you look at power going out of those valves, where do they go? What is this? Neutral. Neutral. Mm -hmm. neutral. So if the water valve is connected to neutral, you automatically know that the power to that water valve is what? 120. 110. If it's low voltage, you'll have two wires going to it, but those two wires go right back to the board when the board drops voltage. Any component in the machine that has low voltage will not be a low voltage part connected to neutral. They have their own two wires coming off the board, going to the water valve, and back to the board. It will not be connected to line one or neutral inside the machine. So if you look at a part, you say, well, how do I know if this part's 110 or 220 or, or 12 volt? You, a lot of times the voltage is printed on the part, but if you don't know, if it's connected to the neutral, it's 110 volts. So why the board? What is this board doing? For communication. Communication for what? We have a mechanical timer. 
We have a time. Then we have a timer inside the machine. Yeah, okay. This this particular piece don't have the board in it, but it's just like this, and the board be mounted in here. Some manufacturers use the letters ATC. Automatic temperature control. Automatic temperature control. But they have a mechanical switch right here that says hot, cold, warm, cold, 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 warm, warm, which I see someone's taking this switch apart and it's not back together again. It's oh, I, I see. I, I see what's going on here. So sometimes let's say it's in like warm, cold. It'll turn some warm on and then stop a little bit and then it'll turn the cold side on. No. No, it's not that. No. If it's warm water, they just turn on both solenoids and you get warm water. Yeah. So if they put cold, the cold's the only one on. If they put hot, the hot's the only one on. Mm -hmm. You're close that the board will add a little more of one or the other, but that is, and we've talked about this before, if a customer chooses cold wash, What's the coldest it usually gets winter time in Florida? Usually, 40 degrees? Okay, well, my grandmother lives in Cleveland, Ohio, and the washing machine's in the basement. How cold does it get in winter time in Ohio? Cleveland? Negative 12. Cold, cold. <laughs> so, if on a given day, it's 65 degrees here and it's zero degrees in Cleveland. Kind of messy. And you turn on the cold water. Is her cold water and our cold water the same temperature? Mm -hmm. No. Is her cold water at like 80 degrees? No. Okay. Our, our cold water is between 60 and 70 on average. No, Remember those pipes come out of the ground, they're not in the sun. Yeah, definitely. Okay? The heat. So let, let's, let's talk about this. Up north, it gets so cold that if a customer uses powder detergent, some of that detergent won't dissolve in the water. It'll just float on top of the water, like sand. And the machine will wash, and when they're done washing, you'll even feel the sand particles in the clothes. So a manufacturer looks at this and says, you know, for cold water, we don't want it 50, 40, 30 degrees. We want it cold, but we don't want it that cold. So we want it between 65 and 75 degrees. And at about 70 degrees, that's a good temperature to dissolve detergent. Mm -hmm. Now the opposite is hot. Okay? The hot water here is probably hotter than there on a cold day. But if you have too hot a water, you cause colors to bleed in the clothes. You can damage clothes. You can bleach them out a little bit with the colors. So they don't want the hot too hot. There is a specific cold, warm, and hot water temperature that manufacturers look at specific clothing. This is the ideal cold water temperature for that. So even though the customer chose cold, it will energize the hot if it's too cold and add some hot water. So how does the board do that? How does the board know, hey, that water's like 32 degrees, 35 degrees. That's way too cold. Let's throw some hot water in there. How does the washing machine, how does this board know that? This is the board here. Thermistor. Why? Thermistors tell the board the temperature, right? Okay, so where's my thermistor? Look at the diagram. Don't sit there and say, well, where's there a thermistor in the diagram telling this board what the temperature is? You're right about the part thermistor. We can go to the motor. Goes to the motor? No, I see. But obviously, it has oh. to be connected to the yeah, control whatever. board, right? So, what are you gonna say? Yeah. Say it. That's a sweet sensor. <laughs> that was no, wrong. That's good. Is that a sweet sensor? This one. Where? The one that from the red, from the board. 
Wait, I show me. Do you want to do it? You, you I'm going to go like this. Tell me when to stop. Somewhere right here. No, you'll pass it. Here? Somewhere here. No, this is power coming into the board. Oh. oh. Come on, none of you guys can see it? He's on the red line. Look at the hot and the cold water valve solenoid. Look at Hello. the piece in between the two yeah. solenoids. The, oh, the solenoids. What color wires is that? Gray. Gray. Yeah. You have two gray wires coming off yeah, the board. And they're going 47. to the thermistor. Oh. It's 47. That thermistor is built into what? The, the water valve. valve. So as the water's flowing oh, out of the valve, the thermistor is telling the board, hey, the water coming out of the valve is this temperature. That's the sensor. We can't replace that sensor by itself. We have to change the whole water valve on the machine so, with the sensor in it. So that board will energize one or both, and, and they're coming off of here to energize those solenoids. So that power is coming in here, and it's going back out here to the hot and the cold. And depending on whether that sensor is good or bad, or the sensor saying, hey, we need hot or cold water, that's what it energizes. Well, this is mechanical, so where is the control? This is the this is a separate smaller board. So instead of the whole machine having a washer control board, yeah. it has mechanical switches in it, but then it'll have a small little circuit board. You see this place right here? If it had the board on it, this isn't exactly the same model. If it had it, that circuit board would be mounted right here and into the wiring harness of the machine. And also the water valve would have a thermistor on it. Because this doesn't have a computer valve, we don't have thermistor <laughs> control. And on the, on the actual knob here, what does it say right there? What does it say? Right above the cold coal, it says what? ATC. 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 Well, junior don't see it. Atlantic College. See the ATC right here? Yep. You got it? Yeah, so it yeah. says ATC. <laughs> if you notice, it says ATC on almost all of them, doesn't it? There's one of them that doesn't say ATC. It says hot cold. It says hot cold. It's hot as hot, cold as cold. But that one there is not controlled by an automatic temperature control. But so all the others, if it's cold, cold, the computer board's going to assist and make sure we have the right temperature to the unit. Okay. So a board is supposed to be on there? This one is probably should have a board because it says ATC, but it's, it's not. And there's no wiring in there. So even though it says ATC, it's probably not running off an ATC. Unless the board's further down in the machine. But we have to look at the schematic. You had a question? Yeah. The, the heater that we have in the, in the machine, is that on? The heater? What the heater? The There's one. no heater inside this machine. The one that have these one. Front load washing machines have heaters. This one doesn't have a oh, heater. Okay. We don't have a heating element. The hot and cold water is whatever is provided by the customer's house. Her water heater is what the temperature of the water is set at. Her cold water is just the water coming from out of the ground. Oh, okay. Okay, so there's no water heater on this machine to heat the water hotter than what's coming from the water heater. Someone, if, if Joni took a shower and took all the hot water out, the lady wanted the hot water washed, she might not get it because there's no hot water and hot water heater. You mean all top loader don't, don't, don't have the... Heater? I would say 90% of them. I've never seen a top loader with a heating element inside of it, but I'm not going to say that there isn't. Okay? There might be one or two models that have them, but again, you have to tear each machine apart to find it. Any other questions? Yes, Chris. What is the faucet switch? The faucet switch is a mechanical switch that the customer can hit here. Um, this is turning the automatic temperature control on. I gotta see them. This, there might be a board in this washing machine. We'll have to look for it when we're done. But the faucet switch would be like, washing machines fill up to a top water level and stop. You know, the customer might say, I want a little bit more water. So they press a button and it adds more water. But they control it while, while it's on. It's not a rocker switch like this because if they leave it on, it can cause over flooding. The customer has to hold their finger on it and keep it so they can add a little more water. Yeah, like in some GE washers, it's called a deep fill. Yes, and they, and they also have uh, another machine, like if you just wanted to get a rag wet, you get the lid up and you, you hit the faucet switch and get a little bit of water on the rag and 
and go on instead of having to go to the sink somewhere else in the house. That's, that's all it is. <laughs> that's why they got the faucet. That's, that's all it is. You, you, hit, you hit this button and it turns on the cold water as long as you're holding the button down. Better wash your hands that way. Okay. So the idea of, the, of this lecture was more geared towards the timer and the timer circuit. A lot of you guys are working on these machines and almost all of them are computerized. I've been teaching here for a long time and it was the other way around back in the 80s and 90s. They were all mechanical and you had one or maybe two computerized washing machines. Now you've got almost all computerized washing machines. We only have one or two mechanical control. <laughs> mechanical controls, to me, they last longer. Computer boards fail all the time, okay? This one here is a little bit of overkill about wiring. What happened here is the manufacturer tried to add more buttons and more features. Because you know, you guys all do it. You go to Best Buy and you want to buy an electronic item and it's got two buttons and one dot. You know? And then you got the, one, the next one to it, the same brand, but it's got eight buttons, three dials, and a knob, and a push this and that. And you're like, I can get this or that for $50 more. I got all that. And then you still only use the two buttons on the machine. Not everybody uses all these features on the machine, but they want to have them. It looks nice with all these buttons on it. So adding this stuff just changes the speed of the motor. It changes the temperature of the water coming in. But troubleshooting it, it's still the same basics. If the component don't work, we have to find that circuit and how this works. If this water valve does not work, Looking at the circuit that I drew for you here, the green and the black, power has to follow the green into the board, come out the board through the black. Am I missing something here or uh, it's okay the way it is? Neutral? Well, neutral's, neutral's right neutral's here coming out through the, through, the, through the machine, so I did draw it. Well, we're not really going through the lid switch. We're going into the switch, but not through the switch contacts. Okay? The water temperature switch. Okay? It's still used and connected, but what happens is the power here for the water valve doesn't necessarily go up to these switches and back. It can be controlled by the board, but the board wants to see what the customer wants. So instead of you like on these electronic machines and you press a warm button or a cold button and it lights up warm, like a microwave, those little push buttons, this is an actual rotary dial switch that you turn. And then if you put it in this, these switches are closed. The, the board sees this circuit here and it tells which valve to come on. On the mechanical machines that don't have these boards, power goes through this switch directly to this valve without this board in the middle. It's just ways to add more circuits and more components inside this machine. Now tomorrow I'm going to give you some exercises to do with this diagram and this timer chart. You guys make sure when you come to class you bring this and then next week I'm going to go over the answers. I'm going to give you some questions you're going to have some circuits you're going to have to trace and do the complete circuits. And then we're going to talk about troubleshooting. And there's going to be some troubleshooting questions in tomorrow's exercise. You're going to practice with this diagram and this timer chart. Okay. I know I only did some of the basics. I'm not going to upload this video right now. I don't know if I'm going to use the video. I don't think it came out that well. But yes. Well, why don't you go through uh, the temperature control suite? Go to the board. Because if you turn that off, the ATC don't work. This one here didn't have a separate ATC button. This one here, if I use any of these three, the ATC, I go here, it doesn't use the ATC. Again, this isn't the same exact model. That switch would be on off. If that switch was here, the board would say, hey, don't use the thermistor. If the customer chose cold, just give cold. Okay, so that's what that, that setting is. Uh, in this case, the temperature switch was all controlled here, but it doesn't matter whether you have ATC or not. If you turn it off here, there's no ATC. No, no control by the, by the board. It just turns cold on, turns hot on. If this is off, 
Now, now it's on. That makes sense? Any other questions, guys? No? Okay, so tomorrow you have an exercise to do when you come in, okay? Stop it.